has to involve your mindset and your strategy then involves the actions that you take to move you from where you are to where you want to be. I'll start with what Visa isn't, right? Visa doesn't issue credit card. We don't issue credit. So Visa doesn't do that, uh, which surprises a lot of people. We'll use a phrase like, well, you know, things changed, but things don't change. People change things. All the legislation that has been passed, somebody advocated for that. And so International Women's Day is to commemorate that history of women making change. Several of the banks have started to migrate their existing debit card portfolio to chip and pin EMV technology. So the SMEs are gonna benefit from a wide range of customers who previously did not have a credit card, but only had a debit card. Good morning. Welcome to the live series Straight Off the Bat, a show that covers the need to revive, survive, and adapt to the new normal. Uh, I miss you guys. We do this every other Thursday, and I enjoy these discussions more than you have any idea, especially with us being under lockdown. You guys are my people right now, <laughs> right? And if you're new to this, this is something we do on a regular basis where we discuss uh, things around the financial industry because we want to help you understand financial literacy and education. Today we have a special edition and a special edition that on a topic that touches us all, literally every single one of us who are going to be on this session um, is going to be uh, influenced and acknowledged by this discussion. People are thinking money and mothering. What does that have to do with Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago? Stick around, it will all make sense in a second. Before we introduce our guests, make sure to smash that like button because we do these sessions for you and we want to know your feedback as well as we love to have any discussions with you. We are on YouTube for those who are weirdly not on, on Facebook, so you could check that out there. As well as you can follow, it's fine if you don't want to like, you just want to follow and get notifications when you go live. We, we're not gonna, it's fine, it's fine. You could go ahead, just follow us, we're good. We're good with that, all right? So with that said, I wanna welcome our guest uh, and I'm excited to have <laughs> Kelly Butte Seaton. She is the bosses in the building. She is our uh, executive director at Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we also have Shermaine Howe, which I wasn't aware we had a president um, for the Singles Mother Association, which I think is an association that we need um, because there's so many single mothers out there. And finally, uh, we have uh, Isada. So gosh, look how I messed up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Isolda Ali Gent Garcia. I think I got it this time. She is the clinical psychologist and managing director of IAG and Associates Limited. So we have a uh, uh, very esteemed list of guests and discussion here. So we have a little presentation that's going to happen. But before we do, I just want to get uh, sort of uh, insight into the individuals who are we going to talk to. So first of all, Kelly, you are a mother and I want to share, I want you to share with folks out there what it's like, <laughs> as well as how many of the little ones you have run around today. Right. <laughs> Um, I am a mother of three, three girls, three very energetic girls. Um, the eldest is nine, a six-year-old, and the last is two. Okay, well, as someone who just owns a cat, may the force be with you. <laughs> right? The energy levels. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and for Shermaine, can you share with us the, the similar question in terms of the the ones that you have around you. Pleasant. Good morning to everyone on the panel, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am the mother of two handsome young men, a 24-year-old, Nishon, and a nine-year-old, Zion. Well, wow. Huh. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting that age group. That, that, hmm, yeah. that, that 15 skin. years different. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yep. Don't worry, you're looking good for somebody who has to manage those Thank two. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, and finally, can you share with us, uh, Isadel De Ali, <laughs> um, what uh, kids you have around? If if so, you know what children you have. Well, actually, I have two biological children, ages fifteen and eighteen, and three gorgeous stepsons, uh, seventeen. 23 and 25 and a beautiful daughter-in-law so i i i have a few <laughs> and wow. a, and a little puppy as well <laughs> so <laughs> um, yes i i have i have lots of kids and um and they are my heart's delight those through marriage wow. and those through um blood bond so well we have a lot to learn today so we want to get straight into it and just to be clear um do you do am i calling you dr again garcia because i just want to no, make sure call, yeah you can just call me isolda if you want it's okay. fine yeah all right want to respect the amount of time you spent in school so no, it's all, right. <laughs> all right so before we go into the panel discussion <laughs> let us go straight to Isabel, um and uh, she has a presentation to share with us and then we're gonna to discuss it with with everybody who was on the panel so let's get started so when i was asked to um to join this panel it uh i was asked really along the lines of um supporting moms um working moms single moms, moms with special needs, the, the wide gamut of moms. So I, I just thought I would really just start a little bit um, based on my experience in my sessions. I've been doing quite uh, a number of these workshops for all different platforms, some of them for corporate bodies, some of them for NGOs, a lot of majority of them for schools. So working with parents, working with teachers, working with children, uh, so I've gotten a lot, a lot of feedback. I, I, you know, before coronavirus um, hit us and and just rocked our entire world, I, you know, we were doing these workshops before, and I was doing quite a bit of parent support, and I found that, and the research did show that at least quarter of the parents, twenty five percent or so of the parents that I spoke to. Um, felt that they were not equipped to, to handle the curriculums for their children. Uh, many of them experienced um, acute fear, but majority wanted to know how to. And then when the, um, the pandemic hit and a little bit over a year ago, these numbers just increased exponentially. And there was quite a, a lot of angst, a lot of fear, and there was there was that shock. Uh, so if we talk about the stages of grief, I think that the world went into grief. Trinidad Tobago is no exception, of course, of those at least who I've spoken to. But there was that shock, and there was denial. And and if, and for those of you who know what grief feels like, it's not linear. We bip and we bop through all of the stages, but but shock and and denial were there when our second wave hit, there was there was quite a bit of anger and, and depression, sadness, a lot of sadness. And now with this third wave, again, we've gone into this just fatigue over the entire entire thing. And for in my practice, those who hold on and are inflexible in their thinking, they hold on to uh the past and have a hard time kind of ebbing and flowing with what's happening now. They're the ones who really have the hardest time moving on. Certainly we have seen an increase in overall burnout. Um, and I'm going to get into the, to the signs of burnout in, in a bit for ourselves. Um, but because we're also talking um, to working women, working mothers, also what we want to look for in our kids as well. Um, but when it comes to burnout, there is a 10%, there has been at least research shows about a 10% increase in it, but women are bearing the brunt of the burnout because we are the ones, women, who have to do quite a bit of um, sacrifice 
cut back on hours for the sake of child care and depending on the institution you work for, that may or may not be feasible. So there is loss of income, there's potentially loss of jobs. Um, for those of us who are career driven, because our career is really, really important to us, uh, there's a fear that we'd have to sacrifice the advancement, um, succession planning, uh, how do we move up in our positions when we also have to manage um, home and children, especially when it comes to if we have children, or well, all children need special care. Let's let them, I mean, they're children, they're developing, they're, they're all children who, who need that, but especially those with special needs. So yeah, yeah. So I, I want to pause on that and actually bring everybody in to have the discussion because that's a lot of information that I think we can look at uh, our panel of, of, of guests and share it from a, a, a real perspective, you know, because a lot of times when we share this information, we don't necessarily have the opportunity to have the discussion. So I want to direct a, a question to Kelly as it relates to the shift because, you know, having a discussion about going through all these different ways of emotion, how are we going to uh, cope with that? And how have you been coping with it? What have you been doing? I mean, uh, I'll be honest, um, some of what um, Dr. Garcia mentioned, uh, I, I recognized some of those emotions and uh, feelings happening very early in the pandemic. And, you know, was confused by it. You know, every day you think you have COVID or, you know, and you, you have to balance the, the schedule with the kids and things like that, you know, and um, you don't have those supports. And then it's difficult to bring supports in because of the environment that we're in. And um, I, I think for me, what really helped me to refocus and gain that strength was, well, first and foremost, um, I always tend to lean to spirituality um, every day, renewed my faith as well as my, um, as my sense of appreciation for what I have and what's around me, you know, it, it, and, and rather than looking at all of these plans, I guess, that you've had and, and what you're not able to achieve, but focusing on what's in front of you. Um, also, I think incorporating that element of self-care was very important, um, starting to refocus on things like walking, meditation, um, eating better, you know, things like that, just caring for yourself and, and taking stock of your, your environment, being patient as well with what's happening around you, um, setting new expectations, even for those that rely on you within your organization. You know, you have to be honest with your circumstances. And lastly, I think um, I, I would, it would be remiss of me to say to not give credit to my husband. I, I think I have a very supportive spouse and um, we work as a team to really balance the ship. And um, I have a, a wonderful mother that, you know, she she comes in from time to time to really just help us organize ourselves and just being more organized and overall. Lastly, though, I had to also focus on teaching the girls to be a little more independent and to take responsibility for, for, for things that related to them, you know, getting yourself ready for school, um, being more focused in class, you know, things like that, just doing more chores, that type of thing, so that it's a shared um, environment. That's great to hear that you have that support and, and during this time more than ever, you know, we, we need to call, call folks we haven't actually spoken to in a while. Cause sometimes, you know, yeah. relatives could be so far removed from even us. Uh, and sometimes we just have to check in on them. <clears throat> so as it relates to, um, being a single mother, Shermaine, and being the president of the Single Mother Association, you know, it's it's quite easy to fall into a pattern of independence as a single mother because there's this idea of doing it all. You know, the mother is usually the one you go to. Um, you know, you fall along with mommy, <laughs> right? So when it comes to always being, basically, you know, this idea of being a, a, a mother is not really a job. I mean, I don't know who says these things. You all need to just take it down a notch. But at the same time, you know, you could turn off and close the laptop. You can't do that with a child. 
So there, yeah. there's a point in time it takes this this mental tool, you know, what what it is that mothers can do first and foremost to realize they fall into this pattern of independence first and foremost. And then what can they do to make sure that they're able to carve out that me time? Well, uh, I would begin by what I have learned, my experience, my personal experience, of course. When a woman conceives, from that moment, I believe she should start thinking individually about the child she's about to bring forth into the world, even if there are other persons around at that particular time be it her husband, her mother, her family members, because things change along the way, life happens. And from the time of inception, I would advise that you think that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm about to start a new journey in life and I'm responsible for this little human being from this moment forward. So I have learned that along the way and it has become my mindset because it actually happened where I am the only person to take care of my nine-year-old after God. And it's a very, you know, trying time for me and a lot of mothers in my situation because I'm not as fortunate as Mrs. Seaton to have, you know, a husband, a helpful spouse to help rear and, and do the chores of home. So really and truly, um, it is a single situation. You have to prepare the children. At, at my son's age, he's nine now, he helps a lot. He's a very loving, caring child. He looks out for me and he would rub my feet. He would help himself and he supports me in that aspect of things. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, I have to provide his food, his shelter, his clothing and get to work and then be back home, do the chores at home. I have to do the, the yard work after the household, the yard work, and then even the vehicle, I have to maintain the vehicle. So normally when you have a spouse, they would help with half of these chores and it gets done. But when you are single, you have to fit the bill for everything. So um, to say the least, it's, I believe God has built women to be the help meet of a man. So we, we automatically do have this strength and to echo what Mrs. Seaton said also, I rely on my God for that internal joy and relief when, when I look for it. I cry out to him, I spend quality time with him, and then I am renewed, rejuvenated to, to press on and continue the journey that I have at hand. I'm not hearing. It was bound to happen. I was on your great. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I said some really poignant things and it was missed. That's all right. So <laughs> we're going to go on a, a quick break, but we're, we're actually going to have a conversation around emotion and money, right? We want to tie back in the two because we had an interesting question on our last live about uh dipping into their savings to pay for university for their child and i can imagine during this time it's a balance of anxiety you know you have this whirlwind emotion so i want to tie that back in and for us to maybe share some insight on ways that we could manage our emotions um as well or even better as our money so we'll be right back Welcome back to Straight Off The Bat. If you're just joining us, we're here talking about mothers because Mother's Day is Sunday. If you haven't bought anything yet, 
<sighs> I don't think you can because everything's closed. But I suggest you do something for her, even if it's remotely, because we want to stay safe. Uh, we're here having a conversation about motherhood and money because those are things that are actually intertwined that we should have a discussion on. Before we continue, make sure to follow us to get notified when we go live on these sessions. It's usually Thursdays at 10 a.m. And we are on YouTube as well. For those who are not on Facebook, you can follow the discussions there. So we're talking about what it is like to balance motherhood and what it means to take care of small human beings, because that's what I refer to them as. I'm not a mother mm -hmm. myself, but I do have one. <laughs> and I appreciate what she did by raising six of us, which is madness in my opinion. Uh, so if you joined late, uh, we have the clinical psychologist uh, who discussed some of the insights to all these emotions we're feeling, right? Because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like the Caribbean does not necessarily assign emotion to our feelings. We, we say things like, but blood don't take it. <laughs> you know, we don't necessarily know how to assign how we feel. And I can imagine that has something to do with how we spend money as well. So I want to start the conversation with Kelly as it relates to being in the financial industry, how are you man how are you managing or how are you handling this pandemic being under you know lockdown, having to be able to <laughs> go on Zoom calls with your kids to make sure they're in school, but then also making sure that you know everything is being paid. What what advice? First of all, how are you doing it, and what advice would you give to people who are managing it as well? Um. Well, in terms of managing your budget, I mean, pandemic or not, some of the same principles pertain in that managing your budget always um, involves having discipline, right? Um, you have discipline in terms of being focused on your goals, your future goals and your immediate goals, um, understanding what you are earning and understanding really what your expenses are. Your expenses, they're not the new dress you have to buy. That's not your expenses, you know, your real expenses. And the difference between your wants and your needs, right? And once you have a focus on that, you have your budgets set out. And there's so many templates and, and um, systems in place to help persons budget that are available online. So it's nothing, I, 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 you don't have to recreate the wheel there. But once you have a focus on these items, so your budget isn't running away from you, um, basically you, you, you stick to those goals, you stick to your budget plan, and you do away with the frills and the, the excesses, you know, um, and, and that can help you to stay focused on uh, managing the finances. You have the scarce resources. I mean, none of us know you know, um, our working circumstance in the future, we, we a lot of uncertainties. So now more than ever, especially with a lot of things closed, it's a good time to, 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 to become more disciplined and to put aside, you know, money for rainier days. Um, if you can do it via standing orders, do not look at your credit card as your disposable income. A credit card is a liability. It is not free money. It's money, you ha it's a loan essentially. So you, have, you should understand from a credit card perspective, your payments, your interest, the timing you have to pay this credit card so that you don't incur additional interest, you know? Um, so so it's, it, it, to me, overall, it just requires you being disciplined, focused, having an, a handle on your expenses versus your wants, um, your, 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 your needs versus your wants, your expenses versus your income. And then there's always the... Um, you know, looking at ways in which you can expand your income portfolio as well, you know, and looking at your investments and other instruments that could help you to really earn more, you know. Um, so, and, and now that things are, I, I think, a little more hectic, yes, but also quieter, uh, it's a good time to take stock and refocus and, and build out your plan. And um, that's the advice I would give. Great. Uh, so... Mm -hmm. 
Uh, growing up, uh, I had a bit of a tumultuous relationship with my mother. She probably doesn't want to hear this, but um, we did have a, a sort of a sit down for a birthday this year. And we recognized that we are so much closer than we've ever been in our lives. And we've been able to have the discussions around what happened when we grew up. And a lot of times when I share stuff, she doesn't even remember. And to her credit, I mean, six children are not easy and not having the support you need from family and friends are difficult. So when it comes to experiencing burnout, for those who may have missed it, um, Isolda Ali mentioned, uh, she had a presentation. You could, uh, when we go, when we stop, you could replay it. But she was mentioning the burnout. And I want um, you to reference that again, Isolda Ali, yeah. as it relates yeah. to... Maybe explain what a trigger is because millennials are all about triggers right now, right? <laughs> I watched a skit about black mothers. It was like a play on how, you know, your mothers tend to call you no matter if you're like five miles away and the remote is right there. And I'm like, I feel triggered. I remember a time my mother called me from outside to bring me broom and the broom was literally right there. <laughs> <laughs> I felt triggered. So maybe explain the trigger aspect as well as what it means, you know, identify a particular feeling when you're sitting away. Because there's this tendency where we think that children don't know any better. And I remember things and my mother doesn't have to tell me. I could feel it. So that's a, a long question, but I hope you could um, <laughs> respond and share insight from a clinical perspective. That is a multifaceted question. So <laughs> let's, um, I, I have to, so to kind of break that down. So the, the first, I think, aspect of this is culturally, how do we see children and how should children be seen instead? And it's so funny you should mention that because I think this has um, popped up time and time again in my practice. And that that children are seen as the go-to people in in the family traditionally uh, lowest man or lowest child on the totem pole so you're calling this one for this one every two minutes and two minutes but this generation doesn't really see it so much as say my generation did and not that my generation had too much of a tolerance for being called for every little thing either but this this generation is much more tech savvy um, so there be, yes, they might be called, you know, to go from across the yard upstairs to go get granny a drink of water when the picture is right there on the table, you know, but, uh, but there, there is still that, that sense that children are meant to do as opposed to being validated for who they are. So, and, and I love that you did say trigger because many times, um, uh, we do have triggers from our childhood that do leave those psychological scars. So when we hear something that even comes remotely close to that inner black and blue, that bruise, we can react in the same way because our amygdalas, our worry brains are, are triggered as well. Remember at the end of the day, all human beings need to feel that they are validated, they are seen for who they are, not what you want them to be, but for, for who they are. And as parents, um, we have a duty of care, not a duty of control. And I think that is the difference that you were talking about there. We don't have a duty to control. Our children are not mini me's. I know we love to say, oh gosh, this is my mini me. But no, there's a different genetic loading. There's a different um, upbringing. There's a whole different school, a whole, a whole different time. So these are not our mini me's. They are, these are our unique individuals who need our care and guidance to feel worthy, to feel competent, not just sacrifice who they truly are for what we want them to be. To, to, to be authentic is the key to raising children who have that grit and that growth mindset. Wow, I, I wish that um, I could have had this conversation like 20 years ago. <laughs> I might have been a different person. <laughs> uh, but I, I hope that for the viewers out there, you are open to have a discussion with your child because I still remember, you know, certain things and to be to be implied that you're not smart enough because your your child is is not fair. Uh, so 
when it comes to being a single mother, Shermaine, can you give uh, our audience out there what support system is in place from the Single Mothers Association, how people could join? Give us some insight on, on that. Um, to iterate what uh, Dr. Garcia said just now, the burnout is very real and we have been experiencing it. I have been getting a lot of messages and having personal conversations with women that have reached their limit. And we have collaborated with the Ministry of Social Development for counseling sessions for these mothers concerning their mental health and pressing forward when they have reached the stage of burnout. Uh, I too have, a, I'm experiencing it. My smaller son, his dad died five years ago. So I am solely the single parent of this little boy. And I haven't had a chance to have a vacation or just take two days or re and relax or do anything of that sort. I spend most of my time with him when I'm not at work or uh, even when I'm doing smart work, he is with me. I tag him along with me because of his safety. I have maintained not just leaving him with anyone because I have a passion for abused children and I prevention is always better than cure. So I would take him with me everywhere and it's very rare that I would leave him with anyone at all because there's only one incident for a child to be abused to affect them for the rest of their lives. So I'm very adamant with leaving children just anywhere and with anybody. And the, that, that causes the burnout way more than anything else to having to deal with them because you know you have to pay attention to them with their schoolwork with their natural well-being you have to teach them stuff and it takes a toll eventually uh the association is i would say the connecting factor between help for the mothers and they come to us and we provide help for them we connect them to the relevant ministries or bodies that that offer services that could empower them. So SMART is the connecting factor between mothers and their empowerment. When they need to, to move from one place to another, mentally, physically, and we have WhatsApp groups where we communicate with each other daily and we support each other in that forum as well. And we have our application form on our Facebook page. We had over 600 mothers filled out the application within the last four months and counting. So our membership is growing on its own and we are collaborating with many ministries and entities to be able to help these women as we go forward. Can you tell our audience where exactly they can join? What, you said you mentioned a Facebook page. Can you give us the name so people could go ahead? A and Single Mothers Association of Trinidad and Tobago SMAT. That's the actual okay. name on the page. Right. And the application form is there and they could inbox us and message and we contact them to go forward. Great. Thank you so much, Shermaine, for that. I, I really am truly sorry for your loss and your son's loss. Uh, and uh, the fact that you're creating this group for support is so important. We all yeah. need each other, especially during now, but in general, we need each yeah. other. So thank, thank you so you. much to Mrs. Kelly Butte-Seaton and Sherman Howe. We're going to take a quick break and come back and further the discussion around um, the impact of what's happening as well as speak to a mother who has special needs. Stick around guys. Welcome back to Straight Off The Bat. If you're just joining us, we are having a special edition uh, around mothers because guess what guys, Mother's Day is Sunday. Do something special for your mother because not only did she hold you on for nine months, I know, crazy. 
like, wow. Uh, <laughs> but you have been, you reached this spot far and it's time for us to say thank you. Today, we're going to have a discussion on the balance of what the lockdown has, has done to us as well as managing your money. And we're here to have a discussion from, you know, the, the scientific side of, of it as well as the community side of it. So we're going to welcome back our guest. <laughs> He's Dr. Isolda Ali uh, Jet Garcia, as well as Melina Simone O'Neill, as well as Charlene Romeo. So Melina is also a psychologist. She's the managing director of Emerald Designs and Events. And Charlene is here to discuss uh, what it's like to, to raise a child with special needs, which I think is such an important conversation to have in the Caribbean. Welcome and good morning. Good morning, good morning. And good to be here. All right. So, Melina, where are you uh, from? Which area are you from? And can you tell us about your children? Okay. Well, I am the proud daughter of Tobago. Yes, <laughs> I am Tobago, then by good. But I, I, I am always saying that I live on the Anne because I move quite frequently between both islands. So I have homes on both islands. <laughs> I am the biological mother of one daughter, a teenage girl who is uh, just two weeks away from celebrating her 16th birthday. And uh, yeah, so that's a big milestone. But given my line of work, uh, you know, I have, you know, been surrogate mommy for so many, <laughs> you know, uh, but one daughter. Oh, thanks for that. Good to know. All right. And Colleen, where are you? I know we're having a bit of a difficulty with the camera angle. Can you raise it up a bit? Because <laughs> we want to make sure we see in your face. We're not really seeing your face. Uh, can you tell us where you are and a little bit about your children? Hi, morning. I am from Tobago. My name is Colleen Romeo. Um, I am a proud mother of a 23-year-old special need daughter and a five-year-old, soon to be six in June. How has it been managing it? Is it something that you, are, as a mother, are you on your own or do you have people who support you? Um, presently, I'm a single parent and it's not been easy for me as a single mom I recently lost my mom. She used to help. She used to support actually the 23-year-old. The she used to help a lot with her. And I had to deal with the five-year-old. Um, during this pandemic, it, not, it was not easy, not easy for a single mom. I had to kind of balance myself. I had to kind of budget out because where I'm working, you know, we are home. We are home right now, and no income is not coming in for a single mom like me. And it's not easy. It's not easy, but I trust God with everything. I rely on Him every day for everything. I just put everything in the hands of God, and I've been more relaxed now that God is taking care of all my needs at this present time. Okay, thanks for that, Colleen. Thanks for sharing. So what we're going to do now is we want to continue on the presentation that Dr. Gant Garcia had for another five to ten minutes, and then we're going to come back and bring it in a real case scenario where we have the discussion. So can we continue the presentation? Thank you. Okay, certainly. So let's talk a little bit again. I just want to go back to burnout. Thank you for bringing up that slide. Um, and just, you know, just sending special, special, special love to those parents, all parents, uh, moms who are bearing the brunt of, of this pandemic crisis, especially those moms of special needs children. It is... Um, it's tough. It's tough. So I, you know, I want to spend send a lot of love out there because we know we do need to send love. And programs like this really do show um, love and community support. Because you're absolutely right, Pauline. We are a village, and we must help and support and love each other. So 
burnout, burnout for, for everybody. I, I mean, we are hearing evidence of it. Uh, the statistics are showing it at least 60 to 75% of children and parents have been showing or reporting signs of mental stress and mental illness. So how do you know? Exhaustion, irritable mood, not feeling as productive. Um, you have to look at your risk factors. I just want to talk a little bit about mothers with the special needs children just for just a, a couple minutes here because this is so, so very important, especially when you're on your own and having to do manage it all with very little support. And these are the parents that do need that extra support. So when you do have income, a lot of that income goes to managing children, your children's needs, whether it, it's a medical need or there are processing challenges. Part of what we do at my company, we uh, do the psychoeducational evaluation. So we are able to assess to see if we are processing attention, learning um, challenges as such. So um, just intervening for schools and finding the right schools and tutors and remedial people. Uh, and the, the critical thing I, I think we, we, we heard from the guest speakers before about making sure your children are safe. It costs a lot of money to do that. So the financial aspect um, that, that Kelly was talking about was so critical. That was really, really important. And, um, but unfortunately, the single mothers are also bearing the brunt of this pandemic crisis because they've had to cut back on their hours. They can't go out to work. Their, um, their, their job succession and, and potential for advancement is being compromised. And um, or while some of us are fortunate to have brilliant husbands who are partners, true, true partners, many of us are not. So, and all children are vulnerable. We talked about that a bit earlier on, but then we also talked about special needs kids being that much so because there's a need for more intervention, which means more people are coming into your home or at least you have them with more uh, specialists. So when we are looking at mothers of special needs, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that if you have a child with special needs, you wanna make sure that one, have they been properly diagnosed? And if they have, do you understand the diagnoses? Ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Do your research, make sure that you have a strong grasp on what the um, issues are, whether it's attention disorder or whether it's developmental disorder, it, such as autism, uh, whether, as I said, we talked about medical issues. So it is really, really important uh, to make sure that you are educated on your child's special needs and do your research, okay? It, it's it's it, and and to have a, a structure of people who can support so going to your ngos uh reaching out i'm also the uh, one of the directors at child line uh so there are services that you can call in if you are stressed out your children can call in and there's a 24-hour hotline see so make sure to uh, access your community um resources as well wherever you can. But for all mothers, it is so very, very important to schedule that time in with your children. I know that right now, restaurants are closed down and, and, and places that you could do takeout, but sometimes we don't have to have the full Sunday lunch on a Wednesday evening if it means sacrificing that time with your children, especially those with younger children who learn through play zero to five zero to six play is how they learn they learn reciprocity they learn practical language they learn turn taking counting singing talking that's where the literacy skills come in so enjoy them maintain that right make sure that you prioritize your setting but going back to recognizing the signs of burnout number one awareness is key so if we can pull up um, the slide on anxiety there. How, sometimes we don't realize that we are burnt out because we don't know the signs of anxiety and mood. 
Um, so how do you know? Are you constantly fatigued? Are you snapping at people? Earlier on, we talked about that part of the brain called the amygdala, which is uh, what we call that reptilian part of the brain. The fair response, fight, flight, or freeze. So if you find that you're, you have that irritable mood and you are snapping at people, chances are you might be in that fight or you are being, quote unquote, triggered by something could be something just because you're overtired you and you're burned out you are flooded by so many things coming in and it's really 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 hard to balance you feel like you can't seem to do anything right you're so very very critical um about who you are and what you do how do you know if you're experiencing burnout right we talked about two-thirds of, of folks feeling that way right now how do you know if you're anxious if you are anxious, you feel it in your body. You feel it. Is it in your throat? Is it in your chest? Is it in your tummy? Right? That's the first sign. Are you experiencing shattered sleep where you fall asleep, but you're not really sleeping a dream all night? So you wake up and you're feeling just as exhausted as you did the night before. Are you doing that self care that you need to at night to quiet that brain? exercising, meditation. We heard Kelly talk about it. Taking care of yourself. Because remember, think about that airplane. If you don't put that oxygen mask on first, how are you supposed to take care of a child if you're passed out? It comes down to self-care because you must maintain yourself in order to take care of your child. Yeah, so what, what we're going to do now, thank you so much for that presentation, Dr. Garcia. If you're just joining us here, we're here having a discussion around mothers and how it influences us all because at some point in time we all have a mother uh, and we want to have the discussion from both sides you know from a scientific perspective but the reality of it right so if you're just joining us make sure to uh, follow us uh, uh, because we go live every thursday so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring carlene back in as well we're gonna go on a quick break we want to have a discussion around management of your time. Obviously, school is remote. As a mother, that's a, that's a balance you have. But then within the special needs, we don't have that visibility in the Caribbean. So I want to have a little discussion with Colleen on managing uh, that as a mother, as a single mother. So we'll be right back. Hi, once again, we're here at the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago Facebook page, as well as the YouTube channel. If you're just joining us, we're here having a discussion around what it's like to be a mother, as well as the world that we're living in. So we're here with a panelist of clinical psychologist, a business owner, and a mother who has to manage a, a child of special needs, as well as her other child. So. I want us to, to first have the conversation with Colleen around what it's like for you to be able to manage your two children in a society that doesn't necessarily view special needs as, you know, a, a, at the risk of song in politically incorrect, another individual, a human being. And the visibility is kind of happening in Hollywood, but it's not necessarily something we see very often. What is like managing that? Um, hmm. First, I have to balance it all because having a five-year-old is not easy. And a 23-year-old who don't have the, the, the brain like a normal child, and um, the balance because I have to be online with my five-year-old at from a certain time but by 23 old I learned to deal with her as Dr. Garcia was saying I've um, look at research I research her sickness I learned to deal with a lot of stuff with her I learned to manage her I learned to kind of 
I talk with her a lot. I have conversation with her a lot um, about herself, you know, what she likes from what she do not like and stuff like that. I train her in a way, God, with the assistance of God, I train her in a certain way. And, you know, it, it kind of good now. It is good now. Right? Because she learn a lot of stuff. And the balance that I have now, it is good now. Presently, it is very good now. Because my five-year-old, she have a, a great understanding. Right? I grew them in a, in a kind of way that, you know, they have to love one another in spite of how the 23-year-old is sick. You know, I grew them up and learn. I teach her how to deal with her sister. At times, you know, she does be a little rough with her. And my 23-year-old, she's very emotional. So I always have to have a happy face. I always have to be the happy mom. Even though at times I am not happy, I always have to put on a smiley face. I always have to give them jokes, you know, to keep that balance in the home, you know, to talk with them in a certain manner. Because um, it's not easy from before. It, was, it wasn't easy for me. It was not easy. As the doctor said, I was really frustrated. And, oh God, sometimes I used to feel like if I go in and have a heart attack. But I learned to deal with a lot of stuff. I dealt with it. I pray a lot. I ask God how to deal with this. And, you know, he guide me along the way. Thanks for sharing, Colleen. Uh, so when it comes to what we're the, the world that we're in right now, which is under lockdown and having to manage, because there's this conversation around um, CXC, SEA, uh, school, and it, it's it's a difficult and complex situation. So Melina, in terms of your um, balancing act, how has it been for you? What have you? What kind of environment have you created for yourself and your family that you're able to manage your work uh, remotely? Okay. Well, I would be less than honest if I did not admit that the the changes and challenges brought on by the pandemic uh, did not affect or, or, or impact negatively on our family. Um, but we are often more resilient than we think we are or could ever imagine ourselves being. And so uh, quite early uh, in the, the game a year ago, just about 14 months ago, when this thing began uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we were determined as a family to use the opportunity to uh, provide the support that we needed uh, to each other. And so uh, as uh, Mrs. Seaton would have referenced, uh, spirituality was very big for us. We, her, our daughter is in the house by herself, but she's an exceptionally social being. Her social network formed a very big part of her existence as an only child. That's where she got her source of strength from. And being isolated at home, um, you know, uh, while we practice social distancing, I was determined that her mental health would be preserved. So we of course started our days with devotion that was very important to us we our spirituality as a family and i think uh that morning worship sometimes it would just be the two of us and that morning worship really served to to strengthen the bond that we had um we also are big into outdoor recreation so of course the the i i I'm on a journey where I'm walking three miles every morning. So that's important in, in, in just resetting the, the, the mind and, and just working with the family to do the things that we love. My husband really loves farming and fishing. And so wherever we can join him, whenever we can, we, we engage in those things. But all in all, uh, I was just determined to ensure that this child of mine not only survived the pandemic, but she thrived. So as a uh, doctor reference, I focused on three things. And, and, and the biggest thing was her mindset. How do I get her to you know, develop that growth mindset where she's 
forever thinking positively and looking for solutions to her challenges, even in this very volatile and uncertain environment. And so I think we have been doing fairly well. Uh, Self-care has been our mission. So our spa dates and our, you know, <laughs> you know our movie nights and, and that, those kinds of things. And when we, we can, the movement to Tobago for a nice sea bath and, and that kind of thing. But most importantly, I ensure that as she struggled to cope with online school and CXC preparation, that she was very much aware of how to ask for help and when she should ask for help. And, and, and so I, I, I continue to try. There are days that we feel we both or all three of us would, would experience uh, some distress and some signs of burnout, but we are able to recognize it. And once we are able to recognize, hey, they will tell me what's happening with you today? Why are you snapping at everyone? And so I have my, my, my team who has been able to, to say, hey, hey, today was a hard day. You need to relax, go chill and uh, i'm grateful for that wow that sounds like a, a place of open communication i need an invite to the cookout uh, <laughs> so <laughs> this question is for dr garcia because melina mentioned growth mindset and as someone who is in the entrepreneur space is something that i've sort of uh harnessed on and said you know this is your to be successful uh, first, the first question is, what is growth mindset for those who may not know? But second of all, what are the uh, negatives to growth mindset in the sense that this desire to always be positive? Because I feel like they have a connection and I would like for you to elaborate on that if possible. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to actually correct that right there and then. The growth mindset has is not the need to always be positive at all. It's actually being able to validate one's experiences. The growth mindset is different from the traditional fixed mindset. The fixed mindset was one that was very inflexible. It was more about appearance, that you would, you would be driven towards what you were good at. The growth mindset says that anything can be achieved you can achieve through consistency through effort through drive through perseverance and through passion developing you know when you look at those people who have succeeded those who succeed have what we know as grit they have that drive to want to do well they know it's okay to make a, a mistake because you can learn and grow those brain muscles through mistakes. You might not know it, but you just don't know it yet. You can do this if you keep focused on your goal and you keep working. It's not about just putting on a face or a facade of positivity. It's about knowing who you are and having that passion. We don't rely on IQ, right? Carlene, you talked about your eldest daughter. And you know, you talked about the journey you've been through. And the reason why she's all right is because she has a mother who stood by there and, and supported her through all of the uh, of, of the milestones and the challenges. You the growth mindset says that you can achieve. You just have to be consistent with your efforts. Success is attributed to effort, not natural, natural aptitude. And that is what we want to see in all of our children, whether they have special needs or not. You know, I like um, Melina, I have one right now in CSEC, one in Cape, one. So I'm right there with you. You know, I, 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 I during COVID, I had one taking CSEC in the middle of the whole thing. So you know that you just, you rally behind them and you help them continue to prepare. It's okay to make, make mistakes once you learn from them. But values, passion, perseverance, drive, spirituality must have faith. That is well, what thank you. Thank you so much for that correction. And this is why I love these live sessions, because I may have had to pay an hour session to got, get that revelation. And I got that for free. Like, seriously. <laughs> Worth and goal. Appreciate that session. Thank you so much. So for those who may have just been joining us, growth mindset doesn't mean you have to be positive all the time. Whew, that was life-changing. Ways. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So um, with that said, we have to close off our session. And I want to do so by asking Colleen uh, a, a question, and not necessarily a question, but to share, because I can imagine it being difficult to have a 23-year-old with special needs in Tobago. So, you know, a lot of people may not understand what you're going through and you, you see some of these sort of memes on online where, you know, a child with special needs had an outburst at a supermarket and everybody's like, what's wrong with that parent? Because we tend to blame the parent. Uh, and I want you to share with our audience what you would tell those individuals for those who may not understand what you're going through. Hmm. Um, first, I must say... Um, the way how I train her, you know, I could leave her by anybody. I could go anywhere and leave her by anybody. She has such a humble soul. You know, you have to communicate all the time with a special needs child. You have to talk every minute. Sometimes you get a bit tired, but that talking, as the doctor was saying, you have to be consistent. You don't need to get vexed. You don't need to get angry with them. You have to show them that love. You know, sometimes it does be, yes, it's been, oh gosh, you know, but you just have to bite that tongue and just show them, talk, be humble to them. Ask them, you know, what is the problem? Talk to them like the way how we will want to be spoken to, just that they, them have a different mentality of receiving things from other people. I learned to deal with her in such a way, you know, I had to study her, her movements and all kind of thing. And I dealt with her in such a manner. First, I asked God, I said, Father God, just show me how to deal with this child, what to do, how to think, what to do, what to do, what to do, God, how to deal with this child. And God showed me how to deal with her. And I left it alone. And you will not believe this child is so helpful, you know. Um, the doctor was saying she have the, the mind of a 10-year-old and stuff like that. This child is so helpful. She, be, you know, she's such a beautiful young lady. She does help out in the home. She does stuff. Sometimes she does ask me, mommy, why I doesn't want to send me in town by myself? But uh, the doctor warned me about her surroundings. I had to always be vigil about her surroundings, you know, because these children, you know, are very easy, they're very vulnerable. And as parents, we have to be so particular where we send these kind of children with special needs because you know what's going on in the world now. And yes, at a center, I teach at a center in the bank. You know, I said, come, you have to learn. She receives everything differently and she's doing a very good job. So parents, we need to be more patient. That was we with single tra with um special need children and as a single mom, we had to have that patience. If we don't have it, we will lose it. All right? We will lose it. We're gonna lose it in the supermarket, we're gonna lose it. But it's it's a really it's a really great experience for me. I loved it. Over the years I get to learn, I get to understand and I have a passion. I come and I get, I get a passion for being around children with special needs. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Colin. I really appreciate it. And everybody is in the comments and they agree for sharing your uh your story and shining your light on something that we need to have more discussions on. And on that note, ladies, thank you so much for another episode of Straight Off The Bat. We're going to close off now. If you missed the first 45 minutes or the first, uh, when we first started, we had Mrs. Kelly Butte-Seaton, the Bankers Association of Trinidad Tobago Executive Director. We also had Sherman Howe, the president of the Single Mothers Association. Once we close off this broadcast, you can go back on the replay and learn more about that association. I think now is more than ever we need each other and to be able to support. We also had 
Dr. Isolda Ali Gencarcia. She is a clinical psychologist and managing director at IAG and Associates Limited. We had a business uh, entrepreneur, Melina Simon O'Neill, the business psychologist and managing director of Emerald Designs, as well as Colleen Romero, who, sorry, Colleen Romeo, who shared what it's like to have a special needs daughter in Tobago. This has been a really great session. I got my education and weight in gold. Don't forget, Sunday is Mother's Day. We have to show appreciation. My mom and I are going to go for a walk and just enjoy each other's company. And that is in itself weight in gold. Don't forget to sanitize, put on a mask. Please, guys, just please listen, okay? As much as I love these sessions remotely, I would love to have a, a session live, and we could only do that in person if we all listen. Can we please listen? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Desiree, for the compliment. Uh, don't forget to follow and subscribe and give us some feedback because we're always looking forward to know what you want to hear from us. And I'll see you on the other side of Straight Off The Bat live show. See you guys.